and now, you know, and then she left. So it was fine. She's so gorgeous. Oh, she's oh, pretty. She's beautiful. I'm like, whoa. Well, <laughs> are you married? She's really Yeah. Married. I'm not married. Well, she's no, married. Lexi's not she's married. married. I thought you were married. No. Are you no. excited about going to Italy? I'm so excited. I'm excited you know what about I'm do? you going to Italy. Uh, <laughs> okay. Do you know who you're bringing up? I'm not bringing anyone. Oh, you're going by yourself. Hell yeah. You. Absolutely. It'll be my second Europe trip. Mm. First great. Europe trip of the year. Right. Hey, you could be part of Love our it. We are Please. all suffering from postpartum Halloween, aren't oh, we? Oh my God. <laughs> Listen, I don't know how drunk people Faye, do it, man. I don't know. Faye hosted well, you do it on the before? stage at Pride Fort Lauderdale, Orlando. <laughs> you don't it. Hosted, <laughs> or, uh, hosted uh, Save. Oh, which I heard was awesome. Uh, yeah, I heard, well, oh, uh, just sorry. great. And then Wicked Manners. We had the gala for the task force. Wow, it's like one, one event well, after another. another. Big opening story here tonight. Well, let's begin by queering up breaking news. Admiral Dr. Rachel Levine says trans representation matters in a White House interview with Queer News Tonight. It's part one of four. This evening, Queer News Tonight brings you Admiral Rachel Levine. She is America's first four-star trans admiral and the first trans Senate confirmed cabinet member. Levine talks about her first reactions when the president called to offer the post, the history of the Senate confirmation hearings, her surprise from some conservatives, and what's important to her for the LGBTQ plus community, and especially if she is tired of talking about trans. Here's a little tease of it. Watch this. Well, up next on Queer News Tonight, we have a very special guest, Admiral Rachel Levine, a four-star admiral in the United States Public Health Service Commission Corps, who has been the United States Assistant Secretary for Health since March 24th, 2021. She is a professor of pediatrics and psychiatry at Penn State College of Medicine and previously served as the Pennsylvania Physician General from 2015 to 2017, then as the Secretary of Pennsylvania's Department of Health from 2017 to 2021. Admiral Levine is one of only a few openly transgender government officials in the United States and is the first to hold an office that requires Senate confirmation. On October 19, 2021, Admiral Levine made international news as she was ceremoniously sworn in as a four-star admiral in the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps, USPHS, one of the nation's eight uniform services, becoming the first openly transgender four-star officer in any of the United States uniform services. She is also the first female four-star admiral in the USPHS. Welcome, uh, Admiral Rachel Levine to Queer News Tonight. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. We are so excited, uh, our LGBTQ community, to be able to talk about uh, you and uh, what's going on at this particular moment in time. I want to start right from uh, what most of our community is uh, so interested in about you and, and your ascension to, your po uh, to this moment for you. Uh, what was your first reaction when you get the call from the president or the White House uh, that you are going to be the nominee for Assistant Secretary of Health? What, what kind of immediate reaction did, did you have? Well, my immediate reaction was uh, gratitude uh, that I would have uh, the opportunity uh, to serve in, in that role. Uh, and, you know, I just... just an honor to serve in the Biden-Harris administration, which has such a, a, a is such a strong advocate for our community. Yeah, were you surprised? I mean, even with with your history and 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 what you've done in your life, uh, the challenges that you faced, was there still surprise in in the opportunity? Yes, yes, I was surprised, um, and again, just honored, and uh, um, it's just a tremendous opportunity to serve. Well, you uh, you uh, ascend to this post. Uh, uh, you've been in it uh, for eight, nine months now uh, in the administration uh, for the White House. What's uh, important to you in, in terms of what you bring to this position and, and why as, of course, uh, you represent our community, 
But what's, uh, what, why are you different than former assistant uh, secretaries of health? What do you bring that is, that's different and what's important to you? Well, so I, I uh, welcome the opportunity uh, to, to, to work to serve um, really everyone in the United States uh, from this public health perspective. You know, my background is in academic medicine um, and I'm a pediatrician and adolescent medicine subspecialist in terms of my uh, initial training. And for many years uh, served, as you mentioned, as a professor of pediatrics and, and psychiatry at the Penn State College of Medicine and the Penn State Hershey Medical Center. Um, I had the opportunity to enter public service uh, in Governor Wolf's administration uh, in Pennsylvania as the physician general and then the secretary of health. So I am bringing um, all of that medical experience as well as my public health experience to my position as the assistant secretary for health. You know, when I followed uh, your career, especially over the last five years, um, uh, very closely, I report on news, uh, so I followed you closely. I've always thought of, about you, uh, Admiral, in a, in a very strange way, as I, I compare and contrast to me. Because people introduce me, and I'm, I'm the anchor at Queer News Tonight, or I'm the host of a particular charity event, etc. But they generally never go, this is gay man. Al Ferguson, how does it feel to you to be so linked to uh, to trans in titling, in introduction, in conversation? How does that wash over you? And have you ever thought about, gosh, I just wish we would stop talking about trans? Well, so you know, uh, Vice President Harris said when she was sworn in that um, she recognizes that she may be the first, but she is heartened by the knowledge that she won't be the last. And so um, that's how I approach this, is that, um, you know, I, I think that it, it is, it does demonstrate both progress for our LGBTQI plus community, and it also demonstrates the, the significant uh, depth of the support for our community in the Biden-Harris administration in terms of my uh, my nomination and then my confirmation as the Assistant Secretary for Health. Um, and so I think that um, I am really very always been proud to serve as a um, as an advocate uh, for our community and a role model for our community. Um, but uh, I am really strongly believe that I will not be the last um, a, a person to, uh, who's transgender to serve. And so uh, that's how I approach it. Do you think uh, you'll get to a point in your life, long after this role, long after your political role, long after your medical role as a pediatrician, that you'll get to the point uh, where you're just uh, Rachel Levine or Admiral Levine, and that's it? Do you think you'll get there? Um, I, I think I will, because I think that that'll demonstrate the progress that our community has made, is that we don't need um, the adjective to describe um, uh, my service uh, in those terms. But um, we've made progress, but we still have a long way to go. A long way to go. A long way to go. Tomorrow we will bring you part two where Admiral Levine talks about Senator Rand Paul's vicious attack on her in the Senate confirmation hearings, the culture war that is being fought by conservatives against the LGBTQ plus community, and why we should all be paying attention to this. Her words to our community are going to surprise you. So it was, it was the battle of the cool glasses. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> With right. you and Madame Did Levine there. <laughs> very, it was very close. very close. It was very close. Uh, Kudos to you for uh, fantastic questions, Al. I must say your questions were really pointed and on. They were, they were fantastic. Yeah. The imagery uh, when the story broke last week or the week before, whichever it was, with her in uniform is so moving, right? Just so moving because it makes you think of what it took to get there, right? To have somebody be openly LGBT in uniform and to be, you know, at the top of the list of, of our government. So, so imagine incredible. she's walking representation. Orlando, 100%. wherever she goes, she's representing us. Yep. Absolutely. I loved her answer to your question around being the first and certainly not the last. I got goosebumps all over. Uh, it's incredible. You know, it's interesting to me uh, in doing this interview, I really felt like, wait, if I had have had an opportunity to uh, interview uh, Baird Rustin or Sylvia Rivera or Harvey Milk, that was the moment I was having here mm. that mm. Um, 20, 30, 40 years from now, 
uh, we're looking at one of the real icons in our community. And it's very interesting. Uh, one of the points uh, in uh, this interview that you're going to see, I ask her, uh, are you looking forward to, after you're finished with all of this, of just being Rachel? Mm. And her answer is really just quite incredible. Uh, can't wait to hear <laughs> that. <laughs> well, welcome to Queer News Tonight, the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening news. It's time to queer up the news. It's 8 p.m. Monday, November 1st. Wait, it's November 1st. Yeah. Already. Two oh more gosh, months. The no puedo. are <laughs> upon us. And we are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we're going to tell this evening on... Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight with Al Ferguson. Hello and thank you for joining Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens, you will see it. Queer News Tonight is supported by viewers like you. We are part of the partnership between Happening Out Television Network and Hotspots Magazine. Hotspots is celebrating 36 years of the LGBTQ plus experience. We bring you the best of LGBTQ plus news, entertainment and support of our community. I'm your anchor at Queer News Tonight, Al Ferguson. <laughs> Let's welcome anchor Faye What? She is a radio, I'm a little hoarse from Friday night. <laughs> oh, no. She is a radio personality. I'm sure we're going to talk about that sometime <laughs> tonight. And has a popular blog and YouTube channel aiming to unite the L and the G together. She's a hostess and MC for many South Florida events, an animal advocate, and owner of Faye's Fur Family. And is the anchor of the travel news show, HappeningOut.Travel. Also, make sure to catch the Faye What Show Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Good evening, Faye. Good evening, everyone. And I have decided this morning that I am going to take over the world. So, look out for it. <laughs> Just letting you know. All right, prepare. Get a bunker ready. <laughs> so let's welcome anchor Orlando Gonzalez. He is the executive director for SAVE, recognized as South Florida's longest serving organization dedicated to protecting people who are LGBTQ plus against discriminations. He also served on the board of trustees of the Point Foundation. Let's welcome Orlando Gonzalez. Hi, Orlando. Hey, thank you, Faye. Thank you for that introduction. Let's welcome anchor Lexi Goza, chair of the Miami-Dade Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce Women's Empowerment Council board member of the Aqua Foundation for Women, and she's also the former founder and president of P-Flag Melbourne, and the former president of the Space Coast Pride. She owns a State Farm Insurance Agency in downtown Miami and is certified as an LGBTQ plus business enterprise by the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, my friend Lexi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. So for my State Farm Agency, I'm hiring. So if you are gay and you are in sales, please give me a call or visit my website, LexiGoza.com, and join us at the Aqua Foundation for Aqua Affair on December 9th. Let's welcome anchor Dale Stein, a master's graduate from Juilliard School. He is a well-known photographer, famous for his photo photo photographs of internationally acclaimed celebrities and personalities. He is presently the director of music ministry at Unity on the Bay and moderator of South Florida's largest LGBTQ plus Facebook group, Miami Gay List. He served on the Miami Beach LGBTQ Advisory Committee and now sits on the city's Human Rights <laughs> Committee. Good evening, Dale. Thank you, Lexi. It's a pleasure to be here as always. We are the reporters for Queer News Tonight and this evening we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast. And here are the bullet points of the Queer News for today, Monday, November 1st. So let's kick it off by queering up entertainment. Cal Penn comes out and announces his engagement before Tell All Memoir. Those who follow and are familiar with actor Cal Penn know that he's an accomplished actor on TV and film. He was on House, Designated Survivor, the Harold and Kumar film franchise, and I can go on and on. He spent two years working in the White House for the Obama administration as well. What most may not know is that Penn, 44, has been in a relationship with his partner Josh, yes, another man, for 11 years, and the couple is engaged. In his new book, You Can't Be Serious, the actor shares the story of how he and Josh met and fell in love when Penn was living in Washington, D.C. In an interview, Penn explains why he hasn't come out before saying, quote, I'm really excited to share our relationship with readers, but Josh, my partner, my 
my parents, and my brother, four people who I'm closest to in the family are fairly quiet. They don't love attention and shy away from the limelight, end quote. I don't understand how you can be in the closet and in a relationship for 11 years. Right. I'm still sort of calculating that and trying to well, say, he, like, he, how he, does he, it work? He was never really, he's just very private about his life, but he was never really, in his own mind, not closeted. Mm. Just, it, I guess, he just wasn't public. It caught me by surprise, be. though, because I'm a fan of his uh, designated survivor. If you haven't watched the With show. With Keeper Sutherland. And, Love that show. And, and mm. It really is outstanding, mm -hmm. and it's about uh, an attack uh, during... Uh, the State of the Union address, and the President and basically everyone except one uh, cabinet member that's kept away from the State of the Union um, is all assassinated in an attack the Capitol Falls. Wow. wow. And, and uh, uh, Cal Penn was amazing in it. But the fact that I was such a fan of his and didn't know that he was in a relationship shocks me. <laughs> it shakes me at my very news core. You know <laughs> nothing, Al. You know Bobby, nothing. Bobby, your, your news uh, persona or your gaydar persona? Yeah. Both. <laughs> or both. both. My gaydar was off, too, because I right? never even looked well, at and, him. And, you know, and I love him also as an actor, as you said, right? Because he made this whole movie about being high and looking for White Castle. Okay? <laughs> and that was what Howard and right. Kumar were about initially. And then he goes and works for the Obama Foundation. So I was like so administration, excuse me. So I was like, wow, how cool. He smokes weed and he's working for Obama, you know? He would have been way cooler if I knew he was gay, too. Exactly, like triple threat. I had no idea he had worked for Obama, so I really was like, I'm totally taken. Wait, do any of us <laughs> know anything Wait. about Cal Penn at all? Talk about a private life. Uh, wow. Yeah. And I think it was the other way around. I think his partner was working for Obama, and oh. it was, it was that's oh. how they met in D.C. No, yeah. no, but Cal, he, no, he worked. Cal, he worked so? Okay. Yeah. 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 We're all he confused. Did. Wait, uh, have you ever done any <laughs> Advocacy none, none, ever before. Like, wait, wait, I throw the exact same barb that I threw at me as news guy to political Perfect. guy. Right, there you go. Hand it off. Well, up next, let's queer up education. Gay teacher is fired after the school is notified of wedding to partner. A gay man lost his job at a Catholic school and a church weeks after marrying his husband. Matthew LeBlanca said in the YouTube video that he had been fired from teaching at St. Joseph's Catholic Academy in New York City, as well as from being the music director at Corpus Christi Church on October 13. He said he was terminated because someone told the Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn about his wedding in August. In the video, he says, quote, a diocesan committee of high-ranking officials met for almost six weeks, something unheard of, mm -hmm. to discuss the fate of my employment to answer the question, should Matthew be allowed to remain at his job? The answer turned out to be, sadly, no. Okay. Um, you know, this is not going to be a popular opinion at this table, that I, what I'm going to say, all right? Jobs are not scarce. Why not go somewhere where you're allowed to be who you are no matter what? There's a million jobs out there right now. I mean, I know, I get it. He shouldn't have to lose his job over the fact that he's going to marry who he loves. But people hate us. People don't want us to live. People don't want us to survive. So why not go work somewhere where it is LGBTQ friendly? Well, I'm sure he's trying to do that now. Right. <laughs> right. Now I don't think he has a choice. You know, and, right? and that's, that's at the individual level, right? But at the, but, but at the level of 30,000 feet up, that's discrimination. It is. Right? And mm -hmm. if that school is receiving in any way uh, tax benefits through, Got you know, uh, any kind of sponsorship for the student's uh, tuition, then we need to eliminate discrimination in that environment. And I feel very bad for the kids because I watched his, uh, his clip and he, he was so, it was so heartfelt. And he, I was tearing up quite a bit, and I thought, he must be a really wonderful teacher. Mm. And the people who are being punished are the kids. I'm just shocked that it took six weeks to discuss that. Like, how, yeah. what details are you talking about? Well, that all it takes the gay priests had to weeks. recuse themselves from the discussion. <laughs> 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 Well, Dale, so you are head of music ministry over at Unity on the Bay. Could you even fathom something like this? Okay, you're gonna be, well, your job's going to be taken away because you're straight. <laughs> Right. <laughs> we found out that you're, you know, secretly straight, right? Right. Uh, no, I cannot well, imagine. First off, uh, that is impossible that you would find that out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's get, can we go back to the story, please? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I was just going to add, um, when I, when I, um, when I heard and started to follow uh, this story, I wasn't surprised at all, to be honest with you. And the reason is uh, discrimination against a teacher who gets married, you know, um, people in Jackson, Mississippi have lots and lots of problems with um, people that are, oh wait, 
Wait, when you're talking about Jackson, Mississippi, where were we? <laughs> At Brooklyn. Oh, we were in New, New York, York City. City. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So now what? Hmm. What you got to say? <laughs> this is like uh, the Inquisition in the 14th century. Right. right. And uh, that's the comparison here. <sighs> All right. Next, we're queering up entertainment. Superman and Lois Starr reveals if John Kent will come out in the CW series. A few weeks ago, DC Comics made LGBTQ plus history after they announced that Clark Kent's son, John, will be bisexual in the ongoing Superman, Son of Kal-El series. With John Kent being canonically bisexual in the comics, fans are now beginning to wonder if this will translate into the hit CW show, Superman and Lois. Jordan Elsass, who plays the TV version of the half Kryptonian, opened up about the possibility during an interview with comicbook.com, saying, quote, there's always that possibility, but it's looking like Jonathan Kent, this version is most likely straight. We don't even know if he has powers at this point. In the TV series, Jonathan has a twin brother named Jordan and doesn't have any powers like his famous dad. In the comics, John is an only child and developed his abilities at 10 years old which resulted in him fighting crime alongside DC's other famous heroes. Superman's son is more confused than I was when I first right? came out. <laughs> Holy crap. No. It's like, well, you're in, you're out, you're by, you're not. I mean, like, oh my God, I just joined our community. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of the, was it the first wife of Ellen DeGeneres, Anne Hesh? I'm oh, yeah. oh, crazy wow. one. I'm oh, straight. Wow. I'm gay. I'm straight. <laughs> That's a throwback. <laughs> <laughs> Showing my age a little bit. I was in, 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 in you. Yeah. Uh, there's an expiration now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I thought the commentary from the actor was kind of interesting. It was kind of like just on the, not, it was on the fence about everything. So there's something, it seemed like he doesn't want to tell us. That there's something behind the scenes that we're not knowing. As, like there's a teaser there mm. that's not quite there. You know, Orlando, I'm curious, from your seat in, in advocacy, executive director at SAVE, do you think comic book representation is important uh, for the LGBTQ community or it's, it's just entertainment? So I think that representation of our community in all culture and media is important, right? Because there are some people that are sort of like, almost like being a single issue voter, they're like single media consumers, right? I know people where all of their life is all about comic books and that's all they ever know. Some people, their life is only about some other type of a media. And if that's the channel, we need to be there somewhere represented because we are everywhere. Well, you know, it's, it's funny to me because I have a couple of quick thoughts on this uh, story. We have reported on um, uh, Superman's uh, son uh, and the possibilities, blah, blah, blah. And, and so much reaction and so much revisionist correction to our post and what's right. going on and mm -hmm. it's not Superman <laughs> and blah, 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 blah. First off, uh, I love the story and the story is enough. It's not real. <laughs> the aren't real. Let's start there. So let's, let's not talk about the subject as if these are real people. And, and, and the criticism just goes uh, beyond. And, and the other extreme uh, point on this story is I think we're watching homophobia in this story because there mm -hmm. has been such an overt attempt. Now, many will disagree with me, but such an overt attempt to use the bisexual label, not to the point of description, but to the point of providing an asterisk. He's not really gay because he's bisexual. So it's not possible for Superman just to enjoy having sex with a man because he can also have sex with a woman. Now the intent behind it is not a question of whether bisexuality is real or not. It's that many people uh, in America and in entertainment, etc., are trying to throw down the fact that bisexual is better than mm -hmm. gay. And I think that mm. is homophobic. It's true. Mm -hmm. On something that's not real. <laughs> I Go love the that. story. <laughs> I love the story. Well, well, with that in mind, it's time to queer up gay culture. The 2021 queer media leaders of this year's Out 100. The 27th annual Out 100 list is, well, out. <laughs> in the 300th issue of Out Magazine. Thank you for that insight. All right. Well, you know, uh, 27 years, wow. I remember when it was first published. Uh, as LGBTQ plus personalities have taken over media, our voices are being heard by more people than ever before. Here are the queer titans of media in this year's Out 100. Justin Sylvester, he's the host of E's Daily Pop, an Emmy-nominated entertainment show. Alexander Chavez. Alexander is the writer of Out's Last Call column, offering queer 
sex advice. Charles Blow, this openly bisexual writer, was a New York Times columnist for 13 years. Jaya Milstein, the founder of Mechanic Shop Femme Inc., she is trying to help the average consumer understand their car. <laughs> Dina Michelle Norris, Queer News Tonight reported on the historic moment when she became the editor-in-chief of Electric Light, becoming the first black trans woman in charge of a major publication. Be sure to pick up the newest issue of Out Magazine to see the entire Out 100 list. I love Dan Michelle Norris. I think she is just fabulous, wonderful, beautiful. Whatever she does, I'm going to follow and I want to be a part of. She's just exceptional. And uh, Justin, the guy on E, I love him too. He's, He's got a hilarious. great personality, hilarious, awesome. represents our community in a wonderful way. So I'm happy about this list. Absolutely. The list is also strikingly, for the first time, incredibly diverse. More black people, more BIPOC, BIPOC people, more bi non-binary identifying individuals. That's really impressive. And also, don't we have a Not 100 media person amongst yeah. us? So oh, I, yeah. was, I was on this list back in 2011. So I think it's now it's been 10 years since then. And I've got to agree with Orlando. Like now there is more queer representation, more non-binary, more black trans women mm -hmm. on that list, which I'm super happy about. Yeah, there was a great list. I loved reading about some of the people I had never even heard of before and what they were doing. But there's some interesting podcasts and inter just so many interesting people on the list. It's a great who's who to go to for things to explore and research also. When I first saw we were covering the story, I thought we were going to go through all 100 names. And I was like, wow, we're going to be here for a while. And I actually need to get to the bar after the yeah. show. So all of let's us. hurry it up. Exactly. <laughs> oh, no, uh, out, uh, out is important. Uh, Maybe different than where where it once was. If uh, I, I know, there's lots of millennials that don't even know what Out Magazine is, mm -hmm. um, uh, and and their news icon, which is the Advocate. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, young gay Al uh, found out everything that there was in the world in news from the Advocate magazine. Will always be for. Um, um, uh, grateful uh, for the advocate. The advocate was out all those years ago, really, yeah. in 1920, for yeah. real. Hey, really, really, all we're right. gonna throw that. Uh, <laughs> says the 10 year ago out 100. Oh, isn't that crazy? Oh. The other thing that I wanted to say about uh, out 100 is uh, out's uh, recognition of hundred movers and shakers is a footprint of time. They're just putting it down right now and saying. These 100 names are important right now. It's very important for us to remember that. It's not that these are the most 100 most important people ever in LGBT. It's just right now these voices are important, which is I'm going to go back and read about you from uh, 2011, because at the time that your name was important mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. community. That is a great honor. These 100 are a great honor. And an example of that is more RuPaul's Drag Race, Drag Race Queens made the list this year than ever before. The show is likely been better in previous years, but what out is signifying is that the effect that they're having mm -hmm. on our culture is greater than ever before. Transformative. It's transformative. Will they be on the list next year? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. I hope they are. But it doesn't really matter because it's a snapshot of where we are now. And if we approach that list that way, we celebrate our community just like we would have celebrated you mm -hmm. in 2011. Absolutely. I, when I heard it was 10 years ago that Faye was honored in that way, I thought for sure she couldn't have been honored because she would have been a minor 10 years ago, right? Now. <laughs> that's my She's girl. So beautiful. Queer <laughs> so that's our queer headlines for today. So let's catch up on the LGBTQ plus news surrounding COVID-19 with our special segment called Quarantine Quickies. Queer, queer News Tonight has reported on coronavirus on every news broadcast since January 6, 2020. Tonight, we report that as of today, more than 3,277,000 LGBTQ plus Americans have contracted COVID-19. Queer News Tonight remembers the more than 53,000 LGBTQ plus Americans who have died from coronavirus. But the news is improving because as of today, more than 422 million vaccination doses have been administered in the United States. That is our pandemic news for tonight. Next, we report on our partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. We are currently broadcasting from our permanent set here at Sunshine in supporting that partnership. Happening Out Television Network broadcasts the largest LGBTQ plus religious live broadcast in the world as more than 30,000 watch every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Watch this. 
My name is Greg Shapiro, and I'm an entertainment journalist, fiction writer, and poet, and Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Well, finally, we finish tonight's queer news headlines with a segment we call LGBTQ plus flash news. In LGBTQ plus flash news, the gay mattress ad driving conservatives and evangelicals mad. The dozen or so Karens who go by the name one million moms, get it, a dozen or so, are asking to speak to the manager of Avocado, an organic mattress and pillow company, because of their new commercial. The 32nd commercial states, quote, love is pure and natural, end quote. While several different families lounge comfortably in bed, in an email blast, the Karen Collective, as we call them here at Queer News Tonight, <laughs> states, quote, the newest commercial for organic mattresses not only promotes same-sex relationships by including, you ready? A lesbian couple. Ooh, girls, yes. Girls, all right. <laughs> and worse, a homosexual couple <gasps> who are both very much together. And they're cuddling in bed. Oh, God. Cuddling. Eek. What is the world coming to? <laughs> but also, it glamorizes it by being misleading. There is great concern about the way this advertisement is pushing the LGBTQ agenda. I love the LGBTQ agenda, <laughs> especially when children are likely to be watching television. Uh, to make matters worse, the advertisement has aired during family viewing time. End quote. Well, let's check in. Watch this. At Avocado, we believe love is pure honest, committed, and above all, natural. It inspires everything we do. From the natural organic materials we use to our commitment to sustainability. <laughs> because with enough love, we can change the world. Avocado, natural as love. That's lovely. And to the seven in the closet <laughs> evangelicals that wrote the Million Moms letter, shame on you. Yes. And to Avocado, bravo. Yeah. Yes. Please, the representation that you respect our entire community does not go without great love and notice. Why does the gay mattress have to cost $1,200? <laughs> I can only afford a my pillow, and I don't like that guy. <laughs> because it's a glamorous a mattress, yeah. right? I love when they say that it's glamorizing the community. Well, she's not wrong. <laughs> we are glamorous. <laughs> we are I, love, I love the mention at the top of the story that it's driving the conservatives mad and crazy because it's such a short trip. Yeah. <laughs> I just wish that these commercials had happened when I was a child and yeah. watching television during family viewing. <laughs> what, a, what a difference, right? I would have come out so much you, sooner. You know, the observation is so beautiful for us because that's what young people are getting exposed to mm -hmm. today. Exactly. It's going to be so much better. Yes. Unfortunately, we've got to wait 20 years. <laughs> right. We have to wait 20 years. LGBTQ plus flash news. Here are the best 2021 celebrity Halloween costumes for gay Christmas. <laughs> Halloween may be over, boo-hoo, but we're still celebrating and my feet are still hurting. Gay <laughs> Christmas, right? It's all about gay Christmas with a look back at costumes from this past weekend. Here are some of our favorite celebrity and political costumes from this year. Niecy Nash and her wife Jessica Betts dressed up as Kelly Rowland and Nelly. Spot on, right? They did a great job. Little Nas X wowed us with a great transformation into Voldemort from Harry Potter, making him nearly as scary as... Ow. <laughs> Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg and his husband Chasten dressed their children up as well. Transportation infrastructure, of course. Of course. I thought they were candy corn when I first saw it. It is what it is. 
And taking the cake was trans actress and activist Angelica Ross as Venom. You saw her transformation. The worst and the best of Halloween for wow. this year had to be Al dressed up as me. Yes. <laughs> there we oh, are. Wow. Oh, it's fantastic. Wow. wow. I love it. Oh, God. He had a, a sash that said Feywa on the front, and then in the back it said Miss Jersey. Look at he, he was Adamant. carrying my dog that he oh. swept the whole entire place with. <laughs> <laughs> and he that, had a press pass, and everywhere he would go, I can get into here with this, right? And he would go to the bathroom. I can get into here with this, right? And the Feywa looks like it's done in blood. I offered so many people <laughs> makeup tips uh, oh, and nice. hair styling tips. Did you by the way, I'm going it. to help you after the show. Did you flip I your hair it. all night? All night. All night, he was it. flipping his hair. <laughs> I love it. it. It is gay Christmas, right? Like, the creativity of our community over Halloween comes out in full force, right? The, the thoughtfulness of the costumes, the fun, it's, it's all great. It's all camp. So, in LGBTQ plus flash news, Tom Hanks crashed a gay beach wedding, and we love the reactions. Tom Hanks crashed a Los Angeles wedding earlier this week, and the moment was quite special for the happy couple. According to Fox LA, Hanks was jogging through a park when he stumbled upon the Santa Monica Beach wedding. Quote, after watching from afar, he approached the couple to congratulate them on their big day. End quote. Diciembre and Tasha Ferries say they were shocked to see the actor alongside with their guest. Diciembre said, quote, our wedding was already a dream to me. To finally marry her, this was our day. And everybody we love was there. And well, and Tom Hanks was just walks up. Um, out of all the days, out of all the people, we walked up to the beach today. It was meant to be. For us to be two women, yes, it's 2021, but it's unfortunately not accepted everywhere yet. But it's like we didn't even see, he didn't even see that. Watch, Watch this. Could we, could we take a photograph? Please. Please. Is the bride, is the groom around? Oh, get out! Oh, 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 my stock just exploded! <laughs> wrapping everything up we were getting ready to go take our pictures and in walks a face that like we didn't really recognize at first and then like once he opened his mouth and started talking you knew immediately it was tom hanks it's like right? wow this really is tom hanks walking up he walked up to us and said you two are absolutely beautiful i watched the ceremony from back there and noticed you know two beautiful brides and had to come say hello he asked if he can take a picture with us and gave us a lot of positive words and good love advice and it was just great what a nice surprise. So, celebrity privilege, right? You're like in joggers, all sweaty, and you walk up on a formal uh, event. So, good on them. They had Tom Hanks there. <laughs> and it just goes to show you that. As Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You uh, never know what you're going to get. And this exactly proves that right. point. Nice. That's exactly I can't follow that. Uh, I was going to say, where's Wilson? Because he's on the beach <laughs> and I thought stranded, right? But right. Um, fantastic. And I'd love to see that Tom Hanks is jogging after recovering from COVID. <laughs> you know, uh, we got a rare glimpse uh, from somebody who has embraced our community in so many different ways. But we get a rare glink, a glimpse of his authenticity because he walks up and and not, he does not put a foot in his mouth by saying, where's the groom? Right. And the moment he realizes it's two women getting married, he talks about himself. My stock is going to explode <laughs> because I'm going to embrace Love this. It. And he loved it. Yes. Lovely. I can't believe no one's saying anything about how good Tom Hanks looked. Put that picture back up, Steve. He <laughs> looks amazing. Is he juicing or something or working out? Look how good he looks. Yeah. That's my one line. Yeah. So that is today's news for the LGBTQ plus community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. Is our community important to you? Then help us by liking and subscribing. Ring the bell for updates. Share this news with your friends and family. Post this broadcast in the many groups you are a member of. Tonight's stories about our community deserve the attention of your family and friends. Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet 
and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader community. This is the only place in the world that tells these type of LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. And that is the passion of the Happening Out Television Network and Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor, Al Ferguson. And on behalf of these LGBTQ plus reporters, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Faye What? Orlando Gonzalez, hey. Lexi Go uh, Goza, <laughs> and Dale Stein. We will see you daily at 8 p.m. Good night. Good night. Good night. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.